Hi there, my name is Kyle and I am an application engineer with AGI. In today's video, we'll be taking a look at an example of using real-time data inside of SDK and TTK. So when you talk about a test event, there's going to be some type of you know, system or systems that are gathering data as the test event is occurring. Uh, then on the ground, you're likely going to have some type of decoder that's going to be basically ingesting that data coming off the system and then you know, potentially writing out that data to some type of local database. Uh, or in this case, what we're going to do is we're actually going to take that data and we're going to push it directly into SDK and TTK. And that way we can visualize in real time uh, what that data is actually looking like inside of our scenario. Uh, we can then obviously use that data uh, in real time to perhaps give information back to the pilot or other people that are part of the test event uh, to help you know, further coordinate the test event. All right, so diving into the actual demo, uh, we have two applications here that we're going to show. Uh, so we have a real-time writer on the left side and we have a real-time reader on the right side. Uh, the real-time writer, what this is, is we have uh, an input file that we're passing to it. And um, I should say the real-time writer in this case is kind of simulating that decoder. Uh, so this is you know, our system that is gathering the data um, off of the actual you know, test objects. And then we're you know, decoding it and pushing that data somewhere else. In this case, we're going to be bringing that into our scenario. Um, so the input file here for us already has all of the data for this particular test event in it. Uh, what we're going to do, though, is our writer is every two seconds, it's going to um, grab the next 20 rows from this input file, and it's incrementally going to start building out um, this data.csv file, uh, which we have specified here in our output field. Uh, so again, every single every two seconds, we're going to be you know taking more data from the input file and adding it to that output file. The real-time reader then on the right side is ultimately going to take that same um, data.csv that's coming from the output from the writer. And it's also going to incrementally um, be reaching out to that data.csv file, grabbing the new data, and bringing that into our scenario. Uh, for the reader, the way we have it set up, we have a seed scenario um, here at the top. And that's actually the scenario you see in the background. So here we have a, a ground site and an F-35 that are already uh, defined. And this is just off the shoreline uh, at the Naval Air Force Station at Patuxent River. Uh, then we also have this data definitions field. Uh, this is very similar to the TTK data mappings. So really all we're doing is we're defining inside of our XML file uh, which particular data columns coming out of that data.csv file um, and basically telling it which, which columns of data match with which properties inside of the uh, software. Then down here in the read data section, uh, so this is where we're, for the data location, we have that set to that same data.csv file that's coming from our output of the writer. And in this case, we're going to be pinging that file every four seconds. And again, getting whatever fresh data there is, bringing it into our scenario. Uh, so both the writer and the reader are actually going to be running simultaneously. And we're basically using what's called a mutex to control the handoff between the reader and the writer to make sure that they are not uh, interfering with each other. Once we're getting the data here into our reader, the way that we're actually updating the uh, ephemeris and attitude data here for our F-35 is we're using uh, external ephemeris and attitude files. And so this F-35 is already uh, kind of pre-populated with a .e and a .a file. And then as the new data is coming into that real-time reader, we're going to push those updates to the .e and the .a. And since they're already loaded into this seeded F-35, uh, all that data is just going to update automatically uh, when those files get updated. So I'm going to start up our real-time writer. I'm then going to start up our real-time reader. And let's go ahead and put our scenario here into real-time animation mode. And I'm going to uh, start playing it. And you'll see already here in our 3D graphics view on the left, we see every four seconds we're getting fresh data that's coming in for our aircraft. Uh, we also have this heading graph as well as a fuel state data display. Uh, you'll see that these are also uh, being updated over time. Uh, the way that this information is being brought in, uh, so these are data columns that also exist in that data.csv file. And we're actually bringing them into SDK through the external data provider. Uh, so because that link is in place, as we're again um, updating that data.csv file, 
these uh, data providers are also being updated, and so we see the graph and the, and the data display uh, updating accordingly. So you can see here we have our pilot flying this weave pattern, um, kind of pointing towards our ground site. Um, perhaps in this case, one thing that we wanted uh, to do in this particular test is maybe we wanted the pilot to fly a weave pattern, you know, pointing directly at the ground site. Uh, so we could get kind of an even plus minus uh, aspect angle to our ground site. Uh, so at this point, you know, I might be sitting in the control room. I see the data that came in. Um, one thing that you can do is I can actually go ahead. I'm going to pause the reader. And at this point, what I can do, let me also pause my SDK scenario. Uh, at this point, what I can do is I can come back and I can interact uh, with the scenario just like I would, you know, your typical SDK scenario. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to run a, uh, going to make a quick look from our F35 to our ground site, and we're going to look at that aspect angle. So I'll run this body azimuth over time graph. Let me update the time step resolution here. And so what I can do is I can you know, look at this graph. I'll zoom into this particular segment. And let's just say we wanted our pilot to stay within plus or minus 50 degrees aspect angle um, to the ground site location. Uh, so we can see you know, in the very beginning here of the weave pattern, you know, we're relatively uh, within those bounds. Uh, but by the end of it, you know, he gets a little bit outside of it. It starts being between more like negative 40 to positive 70-ish degrees. So at this point, I might say you know, that um, particular weave pattern didn't meet the standard that we wanted it to. Uh, so I could now communicate back to the pilot, uh, hey, you know, we need you to go back and fly another weave pattern. Uh, this time, you know, try to stay more centered on that ground site. So let me jump back, and I'm going to start up the reader again. And you know, of course, at this point, our pilot has you know still been flying. Um, let me get my animation time uh, caught up again. And I'm going to use my timeline view at the bottom just to scroll ahead. So at this point, you can see our pilot is, you know, came back around. He's reflying this weave pattern. I can already see just on the data that's coming in that we're getting, um, you know, he's pointing towards that ground site uh, a lot better. Uh, I could also come in. I could again pause the scenario. I could go back. I could create that same graph. Um, I'll actually create it here from the flight analysis tool. Uh, what it's going to do at this point, uh, the second that I create that graph, it's going to show me whatever data currently existed up to that point. But I can come in here. I'm going to zoom in to this new uh, segment here from our weave pattern. And at this point, I can see that our pilot is doing a much better job at staying within that plus and minus 50 degree aspect angle. So we can say, you know, that was a much better weave pattern. Go ahead, move on to the next uh, segment of the flight. So now our pilot's going to start to just fly a 360 uh, degree circle here uh, just off the shoreline. Uh, something else that's uh, relevant to show here. Um, even though the scenario is animating in real time and we're pulling in that real time data, I can still interact and actually add objects to the scenario. Again, just like you would in a typical SDK scenario. So let's say we have a sensor object uh, that's pointing uh, towards the ground from our aircraft system. I'm going to add a sensor here to our aircraft. And I'll set some properties for it. Let's say this is a uh, rectangular sensor. And you'll notice our scenario is still animating. We're still getting real-time data that's coming in. Uh, but now we can see how that sensor footprint is actually um, you know, displaying on the ground as well as our pilot is flying around. So maybe one thing that we wanted to check here, I'm going to go ahead, I'll pause the reader, pause my application. Uh, perhaps we, you know, one of our other metrics we wanted to meet in this particular test event was we wanted to make sure that this sensor passed directly over top of our ground site. And there's kind of two ways I could quickly check that. One would be just simply utilizing my 3D graphics window. Uh, if I scroll back to this segment, you know, we can pretty clearly see that our sensor field of view is passing over the top of that ground site. Uh, if I wanted to get more of a detailed check, I could leverage something like our access tool. So if I go ahead and compute access um, from that sensor to our ground site, 
and let's run an access report. Now I can verify that, in fact, that sensor did pass over the ground site. And from this, I can actually you know, gather the specific start time and stop time that that sensor saw that ground site. So that's everything I wanted to show uh, in this particular demo. I uh, just want to clarify that this is really just one example um, of bringing real-time data into TTK. Again, this is just like a notional um, writer and reader application that we created uh, in-house to kind of demo this concept. Uh, but there certainly is other ways that could be explored um, to do a very similar thing. So with that, thank you very much for watching. Um, be sure to check out agi.com slash TTK to see uh, more examples and videos uh, referring to TTK. Have a good one.